So good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's the closing of uh, three intensive days of an amazing uh, um, synergy and an amazing meeting of the InnoChain uh, project with the partners. We have been spending three days on examining and revising the work that um, um, the early stage researcher has been developing in the last two years. And we are closing uh, the event today with a keynote uh, lecture by Aviat um, Almagor. So um, it's an interesting uh, closing. After the lecture, we're going to also have the opening of the exhibition. So we close and we open at the same time. Those things can happen as well. Um, it's great to have uh, Aviat here because um, we are dealing always a lot about this kind of overlapping of space, design, and time. And uh, what Aviad is expert in is on the displacement of space and time. So he's the director of um, mixed reality in uh, Trimble. Uh, Trimble is a huge industry dealing with almost everything from transportation and agriculture to construction, logistics, software. Um, so he is in one of those uh, research clusters that they are pushing for innovation. He's working hard on bringing and implementing emerging technologies in different industries. Uh, he's also the one that envisions how mixed reality uh, could really um, become uh, a new tool for experiencing our spaces, therefore designing them and therefore constructing them. Uh, he will be uh, definitely explaining part of the work that they have been developing in the construction sector, but beyond that as well. Uh, we at IAC very, were very much interested in um, the potential of the technologies. We have been working a lot with virtual and augmented reality. We have never worked with mixed reality, so um, that's also uh, a step further that we're very much interested to explore with you, Aviat. And um, I usually don't read, but I will read this. <laughs> <laughs> because I really love that when he sent it uh, to me as a kind of a bio profile of himself and he said that he has this kind of very very um, ambiguous and difficult job but at the same time very enjoyable which is to bring those technologies into the market and then he says something that we I think that we all of us can find some of ourselves there that his role requires fle flexible stubbornosity stubbornosity, that's a good one, knowledgeable ignorancy, uh, acrobatics, we're very good in acrobatics, aren't we? <laughs> and mental agility. So um, Aviat is trained as an architect, but he's doing a lot of acrobatics around the new technologies, and we're very much looking forward to see what he, what he has to share with us. Thank you, Aviat, for joining us, and please help me welcome him. Thank you very much, Areti. Um, can you hear me well? So it's a pretty uh, tough time of the day for you. Actually, it's three days, I understood. I just came in. And I must say that uh, it was an unpleasant experience. After two, two hours here, Areti was asking me to start carrying some stuff around, boxes. Uh, was, uh, <laughs> I didn't know that the treatment. <laughs> OK. Um, so what, what I will do, I will, I will try to keep you engaged and uh, hopefully this will be an interesting session for you. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Um, as already mentioned, I'm from Trimble and I, I don't want to spend much time about Trimble, uh, but I owe something, they pay for this visit. So, uh, you know, it's a global company. Uh, we are serving markets like geospatial and transportation, heavy civil and buildings, including architecture, uh, construction facility management. We have hardware solutions like sensors and scanners and drones and uh, GPS technology, positioning technology in general, and we have software solutions like SketchUp, which I guess most of you are familiar with, and Tecla, and actually end-to-end -end solution for the uh, industries we are serving. So that's, that's about Trimble. Um, and my role in Trimble is, is horizontal. I'm serving all those business units with all those markets, uh, introducing mixed reality, um, and making sure that we are delivering a solution which will be viable for our customers. So before I start, uh, how many of you uh, ever tried um, a mixed reality device like Microsoft HoloLens? Okay, a few people. And how many of you are familiar with VR technology? Yeah, much more. Okay, that's great. 
Um, great, I think we can start and we can jump actually um, directly to the 15th century. Uh, Filippo Brunelleschi. And I met Brunelleschi virtually uh, when I was an architectural student. Uh, and I really admired his work. And I, I didn't realize that I will meet him again. But when we started our journey into mixed reality, uh, we, I realized that he was there before us. And what uh, uh, Filippo Brunelleschi did actually, he, um, he was uh, working on the baptistry of Gian Giov San Giovanni in Florence. And he took a painting of the baptistry and punched a hole in this painting and took a mirror. And as you can see here, he was uh, standing uh, in front of the piazza and putting the, the painting like this, kind of facing outward, and picking, pick, holding the mirror in the other hand. And what he saw is the design of the baptistry in the context of the piazza. So real-time mixed reality from the 15th century. Quite fascinating. Actually, we tried to mimic this work and we failed. But it's it's very interesting um, uh, concept. And mo most interesting is to, to see that the need and the understanding about the value of such experience and such engagement was already known back then, several centuries ago. We didn't progress much with the technology since then, but we, we did some stuff. And I would like to take you to, through, this, uh, through this journey. And <coughs> One of the things that will be very interesting to discuss is what actually uh, makes mixed reality so attractive. And, and one way to, to talk about it is to look at technology waves. And we'll not go so far, but uh, let's go, let's say, um, 50, minutes, uh, 50 years uh, back uh, to the 70s. And back in the 70s, we could see uh, one revolution which changed our life, of course, which is uh, personal computing. First time we have the computing power on our table. That was great, and it really changed many things that, uh, and, and our ability to, to uh, compute and handle quite complex tasks, but still in kind of an isolated environment. And then in the 80s, we saw the internet, and suddenly we are not isolated anymore. Fantastic, we can share and communicate with others, and, and kind of bring this computing power uh, to, the, to the community. And in the 90s, the smartphone kind of revolution. And suddenly, we all found ourselves uh, walking with those devices all the day. Actually, in fact, I see people now looking at their devices. We are always connected. We are always uh, kind of up to date with the latest information. But now, if we'll kind of look at this stuff, and we'll look, again, 50 years back, three technologies which are being used today, being consumed uh, by everyone, we still consume the data in the same way we did 50 years ago, behind 2D screens. And this is amazing to think about it because the digital world developed quite, quite fast since then. And the data is pretty rich today. 3D models, you, you're all familiar with 3D modeling, uh, analytics, simulation. But still, the way we consume all this kind of stuff is through 2D screens. And that doesn't matter if it's a PC or uh, my mobile device, it's a 2D screen. And this is not the right way to consume data. Not 3D data, for sure. So mixed reality actually changes by allowing us to bring the digital content into the physical world and to understand the relations between the two environments. Now, if, now if you will think about it, Today, we are kind of living in a, in a um, kind of uh, with split personality. About half of our identity is physical still, but half of it, Facebook and Twitter and so on, is a digital one. And this is correct for individuals and for cities and for communities or, or countries. About half of our identity is digital. But still, when we would like to interact with this data, we need to pick, do you want to be in the physical world or do you want to enter this digital world? With mixed reality, again, we have an opportunity to change it, to transform the way we communicate by bringing the digital data into the physical environment and really understand those two environments together and understand the relations between those two. So if I'm presenting a digital object here, or a, per a digital person can be as well, you will be hidden behind physical uh, object and vice versa. A digital asset can hide physical one. And this brings a lot of opportunities uh, to our understanding of the, of the world around us. 
So that's kind of the journey regarding technology trends and how mixed reality can help us really transform the way we communicate, interact, and share information. So before I dive into the um, benefits and the use cases we support with mixed reality, I, I would like to kind of talk a bit about our vision or our view of those three technologies, virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. Certainly there is a lot of overlap, but I would like, I would like to talk about the differentiation between those three. So if we start with VR, uh, and certainly most of you are familiar with VR technology, this is still actually from the old world in a way. So we need to, ch to decide, are we in the digital world, putting this device on our face, fully immersed and disconnected from the physical environment, or are we in the physical world taking off this device and talking and communicating with people or, or understanding the environment? This is VR. And it is great for specific use cases, but still, when I need this connectivity, I need something else. And then we have augmented reality. And a typical augmented reality device is a phone or a tablet. And I can actually enrich my understanding about the environment but by enhancing it or, or, or by actually applying digital content on top of specific asset. It can be navigation. It can be looking at a specific building or machine and see information related to this machine. But still, in a typical augmented reality uh, technology, I have a flat screen which actually brings a video feed from the physical world and on top of it present the digital content. And then we have mixed reality. And this is, again, the first time we merge together the environment. No need to pick. And the experience is real 3D. And I will visualize a digital object exactly as I visualize a physical object. In fact, at some point in time, it will be tough for us to differentiate between the two. And is it so important if the chair here is real or not? If the uh, building that I see is, is real or not? I can actually control my environment, control what I experience using mixed reality. So that's the background for us. And it will be interesting to understand uh, the maturity of this technology. And if I'm talking about commercial companies, the maturity dictates a uh, decision about, OK, when we should start investing in this. It's a matter of culture. Some uh, organizations, like yours, uh, uh, would like to explore things quite early. And some will wait till the technology will be mature enough and it will be safe to invest in it. So one way to understand the maturity of a technology is to look at this uh, uh, Gartner uh, technology hype, which is a typical uh, um, graph going through the stages of the technology, from the innovation trigger, uh, it can be different things, cultural issue or uh, technology breakthrough, uh, to this kind of uh, uh, high expectations. We put all our dreams in this technology, which is coming to the market. And I can tell you that in mixed reality, people, when they heard about it first, Wow, that's fantastic. We can do everything with it. It will change our world. And this is just uh, kind of a, a, um, a precondition to the next phase, which is a complete depression. Oh, it's not doing what I wanted it to do. Uh, and just afterward, uh, people are start to be mature enough and the technology is progressing to a level where I can understand what is the real value, what can I do with it. Um, and this is uh, the last phase, a plateau of productivity. So let's take a look where um, mixed reality he is in, on this graph along the year from 2006 to 2017. And actually, I will start uh, even earlier uh, and show you some interesting movie from uh, 1998. A collection of New Zealand's weird and wonderful inventions is being showcased at an international event in Christchurch. Oakley might look a little out of place. That's because he's entering a whole new world. It uses software that's been co-developed by companies HitLab and Trimble. This system's still in its development stages. They want to make it lighter, smaller and cheaper. But to see more of this house, I need to put this on. But let me walk through the house, even look out the window at the real world. So I will not buy this device. Certainly a bit early. Uh, the form factor is not ideal with this GPS antenna on top of your head and uh, this bulky video device uh, stuck to your face. Uh, but today, after a few years, uh, form factor is much better. And we can see here the HoloLens and ignore for a second the hard hat, which is a must in construction site. But the HoloLens itself is already quite good uh, form factor wise. Display is much better, the computing power is, is, is better. So we have uh, a, a set of uh, technology which allow us to reach to a point where we can start to be productive. So that's a very kind of interesting uh, analysis for us 
Uh, and uh, kind of based on this kind of analysis, we decided three years ago to start investing in this technology, making sure that we are leading the market. One more very interesting thing about mixed reality uh, is uh, that there are always three ingredients. The first one is about spaces and positions. The second one is about assets. It can be a wall, it can be a chair, it can be a, a, any, any physical object. And the third one is about people. And actually, if you will think about it, talking about architecture, we are dealing with the same ingredients, spaces, uh, physical object, and, and people. Um, but with mixed reality, we can dictate for each of those three ingredients what will be the form of presentation. Would it be physical or digital? For example, I can have uh, a, a digital environment, and I'm physically standing in this environment, and mix together a digital asset and physical asset. And this will give me uh, the ability to make decisions in my design process. Let's take a look at uh, uh, an example for this. And this example is actually from a work did, uh, done by NASA. And we see here a scientist, and I will st start the video in a second. But it's, it's basically um, a video which shows a scientist at his office. You can see his table on the left side. Um, and he is walking on Mars based on satellite information, which was translated into 3D data. And he can actually explore all those uh, geological forms together with other scientists. And in this case, they are represented as avatars. So they are located in a totally different location around the world. And they can share the same experience uh, together. So let's, let's take a look at this video quickly. So he is kind of uh, walking out of his chair into the Mars, walking around the rocks, analyzing them, uh, maybe uh, uh, providing some kind of uh, uh, geolocated tag and sharing this information with other scientists. So a great way to explore and understand to those scientists, this provides them a much faster way to make design decisions or, or geological decisions in their case and better understand uh, the situation compared to looking at thousands of uh, photos um, at their office. So mixing together the two environments. Another very interesting um, fact about mixed reality is synergy, uh, which make it much more valuable for the industries we are serving. And when I'm thinking, I'm, I'm talking about uh, synergy, and I will not go through the, the full list, but think about, let's start with 3D modeling, which you're all familiar with, um, being able to visualize a model as a physical object. And it doesn't matter if it's on my table now and I can walk around it or in a fully immersive mode is a much better way to engage in the design and make decisions. Or if I will talk about IoT, Internet of Things, uh, instead of getting the data from the machine which is standing here in this space supporting IoT protocols uh, to the server, to the control room, I am, as a technician entering this space, can start communicating and see this information immediately, or the machine can communicate with me uh, with all the information that I need. What's the pressure in the pump? Uh, when was the last time the filter was replaced? Uh, all the information that I need about maintenance and part number and so on can be av available for me immediately. So making this intangible stream of data tangible to the uh, uh, team on site is a valuable thing which can help improve the experience and the quality of work. And there are others, and I would like to show you actually one example which combines all those technologies together and brings them uh, kind of into a, a visualization mode using mixed reality. And this example is from uh, a mining solution uh, we developed. Uh, and this mining solution provides, instead of this traditional um, um, screen which uh, present all the information about the mine, provide us the ability to put together different types of data. IoT information from the machines in the mine, uh, materials location, you will see in a minute kind of a rainbow of materials, where they were taken from and where they are stored and what, quant what are the quantities, uh, position of machine in the mine using our GPS technology, so positioning the 3D mine itself modeled using the scanners on the top of the rim. So let's see how this works and what can be done with it in an uh, environment like uh, a mining company. So here is a mine, and the geometry again is coming from the scanners on top of the rim, and this is regenerated every few minutes. And we see those arcs which represent the materials, and I can pick a specific asset and actually see all the information about this, this asset. Who is the driver? How many hours this engine is working? Again, IoT-like data. And I can dive in and actually figure out what is going on inside the mine, and maybe compare versions of the mine from one month to the other, and actually track position of the machines 
inside the mine uh, almost in real time. So a fantastic way for a team of engineers uh, in a mining company to monitor and understand the activities in the mine without, without actually being there, which is a fantastic thing for them uh, because a mine is not a pleasant place to be in. So that's the mining part. <coughs> And then there is a question of why. What's the main benefits, actually? If I need to summarize it in one sentence, what, what will I say? And this is a pretty sad story, as you can tell. Um, and if my kids kind of ask me, what, what's the color of your hair, my immediate answer is black. And this is not the case anymore, apparently. Uh, and they are laughing, and some of you as well, and rightfully. Um, you know, a psychologist will solve this problem, or a good mirror maybe will be even cheaper. But this is my private issue. Now think about this, and it happened because there is a, a gap between the mental model that I have still and the reality. Now think about a mining uh, company or a construction site with thousands of people walking around, each one of them with slightly different mental model about the tasks they need to perform. And this happens actually every day. And this mental model is slightly different also from the other workers around him and surely from the design that the architect did. And this is already a catastrophe. So we want to find a way to bridge this gap between the reality and the mental model. And with mixed reality, I can actually project the digital design in the environment and clearly understand, kind of have one source of truth, understand what is there and what should I perform and have kind of almost real-time quality control to the work I'm doing because I can see what should be there. So that's the main value, kind of connecting together and merging those two environments and provide immediate feedback for the team. So we had some kind of a background here, but let's dive into the building industry and see what we can do uh, with mixed reality uh, in the design phase, in the construction phase, and also in the uh, facility management or the operation phase. And I would like to start with, with the architect, not, not a big surprise. Um, and I will talk a bit about uh, Greg Lean. Greg uh, um, was, uh, is a, a pretty famous architect from California, uh, what we call today Star Architect. Um, and Greg was selected to represent the US in the Venice Biennale. Uh, he was designing a renovation project to a factory in Detroit. And he, was, he wants to use mixed reality to help him and his team to make design, de design decisions, but also to share the results with the public. Uh, and I was uh, visiting uh, um, Venice with Greg to, uh, to show the public, all the visitors in the Biennale, uh, how mixed reality can help them understand uh, the design, which was pretty complex design. You will see it in a second. And it was amazing to see the reaction of the public, people who never kind of understood a design drawing section, suddenly took the device, uh, the HoloLens in this case, and started to walk around and walk and walk and walk. The product is mile long and they could walk as much as they want in order to explore all of it. Uh, and, and you see the smile on their faces and the level of engagement they were in. This means that the technology is, is doing something good for, for the kind of sake of the architectural design. So let's, let's take a look at the small part of the, of the work. And what you can see in this video uh, is, first of all, the traditional way of designing or, or presenting the design on the screen with 3D model in this case, uh, with SketchUp. Uh, but instead of doing it uh, on the flat screen, I can actually bring the 3D model to the physical world. Again, merging them together. In this case, it's a scaled model on the table. And once it is there, I can actually walk around it like it is a physical object. I can visualize it from any angle. I can communicate with other team members, as you can see here. And I can do more. For example, I can measure, understand the, the distances, or I can pick specific objects and get uh, the attributes associated with them. What is this uh, material, and so on. Or I can enlarge part of the model and actually uh, uh, visualize the details to better understand specific sections of my, my design or even do the kind of VR experience and move into uh, the uh, immersive mode in a one-to-one -one scale and visualize the design from the inside. And now every step that I will do in the real world will be a step in the virtual world. Yes, I can also navigate like VR games, but physically walking in a digital space is a much better experience to understand relations and proportions. So that's what uh, Greg did at the Venice Biennale. Another example from the architectural world 
um, is uh, from last year, Riba uh, Sterling Award. Riba Sterling Award is one of the most prestigious, if not the most prestigious award in the UK for architects. And uh, we teamed up with Riba to actually experience the, the uh, winning designs uh, using mixed reality. So let's, let's, talk, let's take a look at this. My impression of seeing Jürgen's studio in the in the HoloLens for the first time was was quite an extraordinary experience. One of the most difficult things to convey often to a client is the spatial qualities of the building that you're designing. It's very easy to show lines of perspective, but it's quite hard to get a sense of scale, and it was brilliant for that. Very useful for architects to visualise at one-to-one -one or, or small scale their schemes before they're anywhere near implementation. You can bring your 3D model up as a hologram and experience it as you're going to experience it when it's ultimately built. The ability to move around and through and to see with a kind of level of detail was very powerful. So for architects, it's about experience, about engagement, about accelerating the design process. It's about taking design decision with confidence. Um, Dimitri was, I'm, I'm not sure he's here, but he was presenting uh, uh, earlier today uh, uh, his work about design and communicating design and this is an additional tool which will help understand those uh, design alternatives and better communicate them with uh, the public and with, your, with the owner and also of course internally with the design team. So that's about architecture. Now if we'll take this design and move into the construction phase, uh, there is a huge benefit here. In fact, uh, at Trimble we believe that the main benefit uh, financially at least, will be there in, this, in, in the construction site. And this is why we um, created this hardened accessory which allows us to actually work in the construction site with a mixed reality device like HoloLens. And what, uh, uh, in this example, what the team did, NCC, it's a Finnish company, a big construction co company from Finland. Uh, what they did is actually took the technology to the site, visualizing the work that should be done. Again, bridging the mental gap um, and understanding what you need to perform. Uh, monitoring the progress, actually. Using 4D models, you can understand what was supposed to be done in a specific day, compared to the actual work. So understanding if you are uh, on time or behind schedule and checking for quality control. Basically, understanding if there are any discrepancies between what you're doing and the actual design. And this is a fantastic way to, uh, to make sure that the quality is maintained as needed. There's another benefit, which is a bit down the road uh, due to some uh, technology challenges, but we are pretty confident it will be there. And you can see it on the screen now. It's actually doing the work based on what you see. So you guys are all used to the fact that if you click print in a Microsoft Word, you get exactly what was on the page, correct? No one uh, can have, have any doubt that it will not look like the screen. Now imagine that using a mixed reality device, you will actually look at the structure and you will see, okay, I need to drill a hole here. You don't need to measure anymore. And this is a, a big problem for Trimble because our business partially is, is about measuring devices like total stations, which provide you a millimeter accuracy, but now, if this device will reach the right amount of accuracy, I don't need this anymore. I can actually work and do my work based on what I see. And we, are, we have a, a, a common work with Hilti, if you're familiar with the company, um, to kind of figure out how far we are from this point and how this can help Hilti customers to really improve their processes. So that's about creating the, the or do the work based on what you see. So those construction companies are actually looking for ways to completely change their workflows and to be more productive and to maintain better quality of their and accuracy of their, of their work uh, using mixed reality. And last in this kind of workflow is the facility management. So we talk about design, we talk about construction, and now it's a facility management part. And we take the same content and now the context is a king. So if I'm entering again a kind of a, a boiler room or any, any space with machines around me and I can visualize information about them, this is a valuable thing for uh, facility management engineers. And what we can see here, I just click on this virtual icon and I get all this information with maintenance history and part numbers and guides and uh, uh, training materials or whatever I have in my database. There's no magic here. Whatever I have in my facility management database can be available for me while uh, maintaining the devices. So here we're talking about uh, mainly safety and uh, quality. 
uh, of the work. So this is a kind of uh, workflow of the building life cycle. Now, it's not a perfect world, and I can tell you that mixed reality is kind of an early phase, a great uh, uh, technology to explore and, and uh, do some research around. And, and there are some challenges, and I will not go into all of them, and if you're interested, I can talk about them later after the presentation. But I do want to share some, some of the things that uh, might be interesting for you as well to explore later on. And the first thing is um, about the, the fact that mixed reality is a pretty lonely experience. I put this device on, and yes, I can share with you maybe on a flat screen what I see, but I cannot deliver the real, real sense of the technology. I cannot deliver the 3D quality of the technology. Um, and, and this is a limitation, and, and if we will find a way to make this um, technology as a shared or, or to live outside of the headset, that would be fantastic. And the work that was done by uh, Arvind uh, Sanjeev, I spoke with him two weeks ago, He's, uh, uh, he actually did his master's degree on this topic, and he developed this uh, Lumen device, which is quite interesting device. It's, uh, it's like a flashlight, as you can see, but there is a depth camera inside it, and there is a machine learning uh, technology behind, uh, in, in the brain of this device, and a, pro a projector. So when actually he's looking around with, a, with this flashlight, he can identify a specific object and project the required content. Quite interesting mixed reality environment, which everyone can see, not just him. So let's see how this stuff uh, works. So here is the front of the device and you see the depth camera and the projector and as I mentioned there is also some brain here with machine learning and here you can identify those objects and get information uh, which is relevant for them like this uh, radio system. How to operate or how to actually to operate it using the uh, output that he gets from the projector. So this is a very interesting uh, direction, and we are certainly looking for ways to be able to share the mixed reality experience with others. Um, it will be required till this kind of form factor will be small enough to fit our eyes like a, a contact lens. It will be there at some point. I don't know if it's 10 years from now or 15 years from now, but certainly once all of us will use this kind of contact lens with mixed reality capability, there's no need for this anymore. But for now, to bridge the gap, we should look for some kind of a sharing technology. The other uh, very interesting challenge with mixed reality uh, is the design of the user experience. So we are all used to the screens, and we are all used to those icons around us. We know where they are located. After a while, we are very used to it. We don't need even to look, just drag the mouse and you're in the right location. With mixed reality, it's a totally different experience because I'm walking around, should I leave the menu behind me on the wall? And what happens if I'm on the other side of the, of the room? Or should maybe the menu follow me and uh, kind of a, what we call the lazy follow? So it will not be always in, stuck in front of me, but kind of follow me slightly and I can always bring him to the front. It's pretty interesting questions, uh, where to place the, the uh, menus, how to interact with the data, uh, how to create a context-related information, because this is what we are doing with mixed reality, how to interact between physical and digital, um, and, and so on. And this is a pretty um, uh, interesting challenge, and you can see here the early phases. And uh, I can tell you, uh, similar to the solution we are working on, this is not yet the ideal mixed reality experience. Those palettes or those uh, uh, panels are coming from the PC, Mac world or whatever, from the screen, 2D screen world. It's not real 3D. And I'm sure that we'll see along the way, uh, and this is certainly a, a topic for research, uh, more and more um, advanced uh, interaction with mixed reality. Uh, some of the uh, some of the startup companies are already actually exploring this, and uh, one of them is uh, being called Emerge. And Emerge, uh, the idea is to add haptic uh, feedback. And I was visiting Emerge; uh, they are from California a few weeks ago, and they presented to me this kind of prototype that they have. It was amazing to see how powerful it is when you get haptic feedback in addition to the visualization part. So mixed reality is not just about visual and audio, it can be also touch. And think about it, what, we, what, we, what, it will, what will happen? My wife is a psychologist, is pretty concerned about the fact that actually it will start replacing other experiences. 
and it might be sufficient enough for us why to interact with other people if this technology can provide us all we need. So haptic feedback, and, and in the case of uh, Emerge, it's about um, ultrasonic speakers, which really provide you the sense of touching objects. And quite an interesting story, uh, earlier in the process, when we visited uh, Frank Gehry, uh, Gehry Partners uh, office, and Frank came to see the demo, um, and he's 85 years old, he puts the device, his whole device, to visualize one of his designs, I was kind of looking at it, and uh, I was a bit concerned, uh, you know, I don't know how he will uh, react to this. And then kind of he took off the device, and I was saying, okay, uh, interesting, but can I touch it? Can I take this model and tear it apart and put this stuff on top of this part? This is what I want to do with this kind of technology. This was amazing for us to, to see first how sharp he was about what, what is the next step. I mean, it's not, more, not, not enough to visualize it. I want to, to play with it, and this is very uh, uh, Frank Gehry kind of style of design, um, but also about the future and where this technology is going and how much there is still to, to explore and develop uh, using uh, haptic. And the second uh, uh, kind of startup company related to uh, user experience is uh, Neurable. Um, and again, I, I had the, the uh, privilege to kind of explore their technology. Um, it's an early phase, but it is fantastic. I mean, kind of the, the ultimate interface because I don't need to do gestures and I don't need to, to click on anything. I don't need controller. I just need to be focused on my design, hopefully. If, if I'm doing my work well, it will work. Uh, and that's quite interesting and certainly as the next phase of user experience. So it makes the, uh, the interface actually redundant. I can just think about it, it will happen, hopefully. Uh, so those are two uh, interesting approaches to the uh, mixed reality uh, kind of experience and the user interaction with data. And my last section of this presentation, I know this is a technology uh, oriented um, environment here, but I would like actually to take you back to the literature. And this is a story I, I used to tell my kids uh, before they went to sleep, and I think it's the right, right time now, more or less, and it's kind of dark here, so I hope you will, I, I will actually test your, your attention span, so I hope you will bear with me for two minutes and you will listen to the story. It's a quite nice story by um, uh, uh, Shmuel uh, Agnon is a um, Nobel Prize winner uh, for literature. And this story is not his style, but he's actually talking about architecture and this very interesting relations uh, or, or kind of a role of an architect to bridge this gap between physical and, and imagination when he's actually approaching the owner or the community. So let's, uh, let's listen to this uh, interesting story. I think I need to, one second. And get this mode. Challenge here to start it, so one, one second. This is a story about an old Chinese architect who was much beloved by the emperor for all the castles and palaces and temples and fortresses that he had built for him, which were finer and more beautiful than any building erected by any emperor in the past. Once the emperor commissioned this architect to build him a new castle. Years passed without its being erected for the architect was old by now and no longer much interested in timber and stone. In the end, he was urged to hurry up. And so 
He took a canvas, drew on it a castle with such skill that everyone who saw it thought it was real and informed the emperor that the castle was finished. When the emperor came to see it, he was overjoyed because he had never encountered such a fine castle in his life. Just then, though, someone whispered to him, That isn't a castle at all. It isn't even an excuse for one. It's nothing but a painting on canvas. Hearing this, the emperor grew furious. I, he said to the architect, have raised you above all other builders and had perfect faith in you, and this is how you reward me? But what have I done wrong? asked the architect in amazement. And you have the nerve to ask yet? said the emperor. As if it weren't bad enough that you failed to carry out my instructions, you have swindled me and sought to palm off a mere painting as a building. A mere painting? queried the architect, tapping with his finger on a door he had drawn. We'll see about that. And with that, the door opened, and the architect stepped through it and never came out again. Thank you very much, Aviad. Thank you for this in-depth uh, immersion to this fantastic technology. Uh, would anyone have any question? I mean, this is, marks the end of four intense days, and uh, this, I think, would be the perfect moment to, to close it off with uh, intense questions for this amazing research and development. So, anyone? Come back. Um, thank you, Aviat, for it was, it was nice to see the presentation after talking a little bit uh, today. Um, Trimble being a, a hardware, kind of having hardware foundations, and seemingly the, the issue of the different kinds of reality kind of being a hardware issue, you know, where is the display? Um, is Trimble looking? I mean, you, you mentioned some people that are kind of doing some interesting work in this, but is Trimble uh, looking to, to put some of their hardware uh, knowledge and background to, to kind of provide some interesting solutions for other kinds of realities? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so great question, and, uh, and actually, you know, uh, when when we started, we were looking for building our own device, and quite quickly realized we realized this is not the right approach. In fact, if you think about it, a total station is a kind of a mixed reality device. You take a point from a digital content and actually project this point into space in the right location. That's mixed reality, but a very abstract one. But back to the question, uh, we decided the better approach will be our assumption that the hardware at the end will be a uh, commodity. And we would like to focus on the workflow, on the processes, and on the software side. And what we are doing now is very hardware is pretty much hardware agnostic. So we do support Microsoft with the HoloLens. We support Google with the Tango and now with the AR Core. We support Dacry, if you're familiar with Dacry, Meta, and some other more kind of secretive startup, which I cannot mention here. But basically, we are working with all the major vendors in the industry and delivering our software solution on top of their devices. 
Now, there is one exception uh, because there are some advantages to Trimble technology, and we are very good in positioning, for example. Uh, so, HoloLens have no GPS. Uh, Google Tango phone, the GPS is a few meter accuracy. Uh, Trimble GPSs are one centimeter accuracy. So, uh, we did a work with Google on, on the Tango technology. We actually attach our uh, GPS antenna to it, external antenna, and with this, we got a very accurate uh, on site, outdoor mixed reality experience or augmented reality experience for our customers in the heavy civil market. Okay? Any more questions? Yes, hello, uh, and thank you again for the presentation. I just wanted to ask, uh, do you envision a scenario that is different than the scenario we have today? I mean, who's going to hold the key of this data? Like, today's data is actually like on Facebook, whether or any other Insta social media account. It's like we have our own profile, but then a cloud that is collecting all this information. Is there any concept to divide this or to actually develop it more, to fight it or to... So that's, that's a fantastic question. I don't have the, the right answer for you at the moment. I can tell you that this is a very interesting topic for us as well and for uh, all the big vendors because now the data is not just about what you're searching over the web uh, or what we are kind of writing on Twitter, it's much more experience engagement level data which is very valuable for some organizations. So they would like to know where you are uh, working, what you are looking at, what is the environment around you and based on this you know to, to deliver the right package for you. So. No answer, and I think time will tell what will be the right format and who will own the data. I guess it will be multiple vendors, uh, and we'll see how it goes. But certainly an interesting uh, point uh, from the kind of uh, a moral point of view, but also from the commercial side. If I may, I would like to also ask a question. I'm sorry, Sabrina. <laughs> uh, because, I mean, here at IAC, we look at technology quite critically. It is part of what we do, part of our challenges, and the way we challenge our students. Uh, of course, this being a technology that is fascinating and uh, is something that we have been talking in our classrooms quite a lot, not just mixed reality, but virtual reality and augmented reality, it brings us to the question of the details. Uh, the devil is in the details indeed, and of course when we as architects are asked to immerse ourselves into one of our creations, we cannot help but look at the details. And uh, the more real it looks, the more demanding we are. So how are we actually going to move away from this, uh, let's say, slope of in enlighten enlightenment, as you said we are now, to this plateau of productivity, and uh, I mean, Temporarily, well, what are we talking about? How long will it take to actually get to this level of detail that would make us demanding architects happy and satisfied? Well, that's a, that's a complex question with different um, kind of fronts. Um, first, I don't think mixed reality will be the only medium. I mean, what we are looking at and what we are working quite hard with customers is kind of a mix or hybrid environment where you have a physical model, let's say, of the city, and inside this physical model you start to place digital model which should be more dynamic of new designs or when you do want to see some, some uh, uh, analysis of uh, wind or, or uh, um, uh, moving people and so on and transportation. So mix of, of uh, different type of data will be probably the best way to go. Uh, including, by the way, 2D, which have its own value. So I would like to pick a specific location in the mixed reality and send the 2D into a big screen because looking at a section is not uh, something that will be replaced, I believe, by mixed reality. So this kind of hybrid is one is part of the answer. The second part is more like, um, I see it as a technology challenge. I mean, details are possible today as well. There is some work that needs to be done just because the computing power required by mixed reality is, is, uh, is kind of a more, uh, more than what those devices can offer today. So having the ability to run details in those devices is a matter of time. I mean, it can be done today with some optimization of the models, uh, but in the future I can certainly see this stuff being streamed into the device from um, an Azure or AWS server, which is doing the, the tough work, and uh, sending the device just the calculated information. Uh, no big challenge. A year or two, you will see those details uh, kind of available. 
This relates to a concept that we defined quite early in the process, which is called one-click mixed reality. It is one thing to work with customers like you, very sophisticated customers with some uh, spare time in their hands, in a way, compared to commercial companies, foster and partners, for example, they need to deliver a project tomorrow, they cannot afford spending three days on learning how to use Unity. And the engineers on site, the engineers who are actually in charge of the projects, the architect in charge of the projects, they would like to just click one button and get their context in mixed reality. This is what we are doing today, not in a perfect uh, way because of the details, but things will improve quite quickly. I'm pretty positive. Okay. Thank you very much, Aviat, for the talk. Um, I see a lot of um, relation when we're talking about virtual and augmented reality uh, or mixed reality and design. I see a lot um, uh, the solution related to what the architect or the engineer or let's say the global manager of a project is gaining. And um, I'm wondering, because a couple of years back we have been um, collaborating in our city and technology program with the Urban Ministry, the Ministry of Urban Housing in Mumbai, in India, and we use virtual reality uh, not for us to see how our design is going to look like, but how the people can give us feedback through being immersed in that experience. And I wonder, whereas you're looking also at the possibility of using that technology for either participants design processes or for processes that they are including uh, the end user as a kind of a feedback loop for the designer? Yes, um, I ask you to ask this question, no? <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's, that's great. And, and actually what we did in, in the Venice Biennale was, a, was a, a kind of an experiment of what's the value for the public. And what we realized is the ability to understand the complex environment is much more uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, easier when you use a mixed reality technology. In fact, we did a, a research with Cambridge University um, a few weeks ago, we got the results, where we tested kind of the ability to understand spatial, kind of spatial understanding was a topic and how easy it is for people to understand uh, kind of spatial structure uh, using uh, instruction on 2D compared to instruction on a 3D flat screen compared to mixed reality where they actually see the, the, the assembly in front of them. And the results were quite interesting, uh, and I will not go to the full list, it was kind of some, some mixed results, but the most uh, uh, visible item was that mixed reality provides the best way to understand what you need to build and actually create uh, the, the structure faster. Just because you see it in front of you, and you can walk around it and understand what, what it is. So bringing the public into this and using the, the technology um, to en engage the public and provide them uh, as experience of the design, I think is a huge thing and a very valuable uh, next step for, for the industry, certainly. Thank you very much. Please help me thank Aviad. Uh,